Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardstone Auto Wrecking in Bernardstown, Massachusetts with something kind of cool and at one point very commonly seen on the roads here in New England. A 1973 Dodge W200 four-wheel drive plow truck. Now this one here is kind of an unusual one. It's a 131 inch wheelbase, eight foot bed with the Uteline step side bed. More on that in a second. But with that, the price on this thing new was $3,914, which was seven hundred and thirty three bucks more than a D 200 two wheel drive. So again, you paid seven hundred and seventy three bucks for the ability to have four wheel drive and a push a plow. Now, this is kind of a cool thing here. This is a magazine from October of 1972 called P. V4, pickup van and four-wheel drive. This is the very first issue ever. Uh, and here we have inside here, Dodge uh, pickup trucks tested. And the funny thing is with this one here, I always love old magazines, volume one, number one. Now, of course, Peterson Publishing had four-wheel drive books too in the 70s, but this is not them. This is CBS Publications right here, not Peterson. And this magazine, PV4, I don't know what happened to it, but this is the very first issue ever. But more importantly, inside, a nice test of one of these trucks right here. There it is, the W200 pickup. It says here, the line of four-wheel drive vehicles built by Dodge is called Power Wagon. And this is altogether an apt description. They're big, tough vehicles built for long years of hard use. And from the number of Power Wagons of ancient vintage that are still doing service, their reputation for durability is obviously well-deserved. Now this one here, optional bigger wheels and tires. Look at these wheels, more on those in a second. But as we get into the next page on this thing here, it gives lots of good information on options and, and other bits. Here it is right here, here's the back of the thing right here. And this one's probably a manufacturer truck from Michigan, 1971 plates. But on the other page in the middle, there's lots of good info on the options and their costs. Here it is right here. Now this one here is the 362 barrel. And there it is on display. And that engine, according to this here, the 225 slant six was standard, 156 bucks for the 318, 199 for the 362 barrel with 178 horsepower, three speed automatic, the Hork flight was 237 bucks. And back to those optional wheels, there are 16 and a half by six and three quarter inches, $21. We'll talk about those in a moment. But again, interesting to see road tests of vehicles. Now this again is a 73. And this body cycle went 1973 through 1993, a 22 year run. Now 72 and three share the same grill right here. Now, the big question is, what's under the hood on this one? Could it be the 360, the 318, the Slant 6? Ah, all right. Yeah, there it is. This is the 360. Again, 199 bucks over the Slant 6. And yes, you could get a Slant 6. Now, this is the biggest engine you could get in a four-wheel drive. The 400 cubic inch big block was strictly reserved for two-wheel drive B200s. Might have been an issue with the transfer case or the drive line not being up to the torque of the 400. Not sure. For 1974, the 440 was available in Dodge half-ton and three-quarter ton trucks. But again, this is a 362 barrel. Now, we see the plow here. And if you notice, it has three hydraulic rams. We'll see there's one here and there's one on the other side for moving a plow left or right. This is a Fisher plow. There's one here for moving up and down. These hoses go to a belt driven hydraulic pump right there. That is something that would have been added on at the conversion perhaps of, of plow installation shop. I don't see snow fighter graphics on this one, so I'm not sure that it was born for snow plowing. Not sure, but it has been certainly upgraded. Now on the firewall, that's the electronic voltage regulator and the pointless electronic ignition, which were optional in 1973. On the right-hand side, there is the uh, control module, that thing right there, that sort of box with the little heat sink on the top. That's all stuff for the electronic ignition, which again was new stuff in 1973. Now Chrysler was one of the first in Detroit to go to electronic ignition. Chevy didn't go there till 75, so kind of a big deal to see it on this one here. But again, big radiator and 362 barrel. These two cables right here, are of course, uh, these control the hydraulic actuator right here, uh, left, right, up, down. And on that note, let's get our way toward the back. And here's one of those heavy duty wheels right here. They're a little wider, again, 6.75 or six and three quarter inches, uh, what, 23 bucks, whatever it was. Now these have manual hubs, you know, the uh, shift on the fly or all wheel drive on the go stuff was still a few years away for Dodge. But again, here's the 200. Now something I love about these, this series of truck, and again, these were in production for 22 years, is the way the hood was designed. If you know your 71 
and 72 Plymouth Roadrunner and GTX. They had a hood that had sort of an indentation where the engine callout would go right here. Well, the Dodge Truck Studio utilized a similar theme. And on this one, you can kind of see, well, the word power wagon would go right here. It's been removed or something. But again, this, this shape right here is very reminiscent of the 71 Roadrunner, the way that it would say 383 or, or 440 or Hemi right in there. Kind of cool how the styling studio sort of shared between car and truck designs. But again, this cab design right here, 22 year run, 1972 through 1993. Uh, let's take a peek inside. We'll trade spots. Super Shane Richardson, the cameraman. And this one, of course, like all these trucks, has the gas tank in the cab. Here's the filler. The tank's behind the seat. Right in there, you can kind of see there. It's, it's safe-ish, I guess. But we look inside, this one has the optional torque flight automatic. There's also a three-speed or a four-speed manual. 100 mile an hour speedometer, which is pretty realistic. These things usually had a 354 or a 410 axle ratio, which means that top speed is not going to be much more than 90, maybe 100 miles per hour. And those two shifts, or the knobs, the handles there on the left-hand side, those are, of course, the controls for the plow unit. And now this, again, is kind of an unusual one. This is a util line or utility line. Step side, you can see right here, uh, it's an eight foot bed on a 131 inch wheelbase. Most of these were style sides or uh, what do they call it? The, uh, style side, I guess it was, or style line. That's what it was. But on this one here, we can see this one is a util line. Now, the only thing I will say, it's possible this truck was not born with this bed. It's a different color. And again, this bed or the style side or style line, they're both interchangeable on the frame. No big deal. But again, being a 200 series, this one has the heavy duty Dana 60 rear axle. And here's the full floating hub right here. And again, we see that wide rear wheel and an industrial center cap. The hub cap on this thing wasn't a perimeter thing. It clipped onto these. It was sort of like a dome. So again, heavy duty wheels right there. Kind of desirable, those things right there today. Now the Dana 60 in this thing is similar to a car Dana, like in a Hemi Cuda or a Hemi Daytona charge or whatever. They have a nine and three quarter inch ring gear, but kind of different. Beyond the fact that this has full floating hubs, another thing too about car Danas versus truck Danas, we look down here, the wood floor on this bed is rotten, but there's that Dana 60 rear axle right there. And when the drive shaft comes into the casing, that one's smooth on top. A car Dana, something born for use in a GTX or a Roadrunner or a Charger, RT, whatever, would have extra metal on the top with a flat surface and three drilled and tapped holes for the pinion snubber. So the car Dana and the truck Dana are very different, including the casting. Although the ring gear is interchangeable. But as we make our way around the back, very utilitarian, and again, util line, I get it, you know. And we can see here the tailgate doesn't even have a latch or a handle. It's basically, you have to go old school with these puppies here, the, the pintles, the clasps, whatever you call them, this comes down. And again, very old school, very functional. And again, uh, as uh, that PV4 magazine stated, these were very, very much form, um, over function or function over form. There you go. So coming to this side here, we can see the step side is similar to a half ton short bed here, but up here, all this extra room. And in some cases, there was an optional external spare tire that would live right here. And let's open the door on this puppy and see what we can find inside. Yeah, there it is. Rubber floor mats on this one here. Pretty basic uh, equipment on this one. It's not a uh, adventurer, which would be the top dog. And I do mean dog. Uh, inside the glove compartment, let's play a little game called what's in the box. Let's open it up. And some kind of cool on these is the way the glove box opens down, becomes a bit of a, a tray. You can put your beers, uh, excuse me, your Coca-Cola, your Pepsi right there. And notice how the fuse box is up here for convenience. There's the flasher relays right here. You can change about real quick and easy. The fuses are all right there instead of being hidden down in the kick panel. But inside here, what do we have? Here is, oh, an owner's manual for a CB radio. We have here, Turner's Falls Fire District. Water department must be the water bill. Kind of nice from 1974. Very nice. Here is, oh, nice. From Gibbs Gas Station. Here we go. Some hand wipes. Very sweet of them to supply those. Uh, Construction Industry OSHA Safety Digest right here uh, from uh, 1976, I guess. There you go. The bicentennial year. Uh, ooh, ooh, no one, there's some bank numbers, no one to do that. Oh, there you go, Dodge Trucks, here it is right here, man. The owner's manual for this thing. How cool is that? So you never know what you're gonna find in the old glove compartment as we play what's in the box. And as we conclude this video, let's take one peek at the 
front wheel, and there it is right there. That's one of those extra wide stance wheels. Now from the outside, they look like eight or 10 inches, but they're actually 6.75 or six and three quarter inches, not even seven inches wide. But the way they have that outboard offset makes them look really beefy and burly. And these wheels are extra cost and kind of desirable. So that's the story of the second year, 1973 Dodge W, 200 four wheel drive plow truck. This thing undoubtedly cleared the blizzard of 76, which was a big deal here in New England. It was three years old at the time and uh, was parked here, put away wet, and then here it sits at Bernie Sonata wrecking, rusting into the ground. But with that said, we can learn from these vehicles all the same. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Magnus YouTube channel, hit the like button, hit the bell so you're alerted when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning, and we'll see you then.